All right, we're going to try this again. We're going to try this again. Let's talk. Now let's talk. Let's talk now. Let's talk now. Can you hear me now? Can everybody hear me on Facebook? D Mac on Podbean. What's going on? I see you. Uh Facebook, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I just need to know. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Somebody let me know. Can you hear me? I need somebody to let me know. There we go. 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 All right. Let's let's try this 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 uh intro again. Since we want to play, since my my you know computer wanna play with me, let me go on and start it out. You will not win. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Appreciate you, D-Mac. I see you smoke in the house. What's up, Saturday Night Smoke? What's going on? Ty, I see you. All right, everybody. Welcome, yeah, to the Big Time Show podcast that is being heard right there on Podbean. That's right. My, my, My brother in there, Smoke. Saturday night smoking there. D Mac is in the house. Miss Ty is in the house. I see you. What is going on? Now I got to share everything all over again because there was some jankiness going on. And now I got to share everything. So y'all forgive me while I try to get some people in here who were with me just a few seconds ago. Uh, but they left me because my sound was janky i don't know what happened i just rebooted everything and i'm back now so uh what's going on on this saturday uh evening we got a few things to talk about uh pretty much a few things that you guys need to talk about because i'm just gonna sit back i'm gonna say what i got to say i'm gonna see if y'all agree with me or not and then we're gonna go on and enjoy the rest of our saturday afternoon that, that's what we're going to do. Hello. Uh, somebody popped in and popped out on pod, being whoever that was. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, I'm coming. Just give me a second. I'm going to speak to you. I always speak to my people who take the little time out to come hang with their boy right here. So give me a few minutes. But because of the jankiness of whatever happened, I couldn't uh, be... Even while I was on time, you just couldn't hear me, which is complete jankiness and raggedness. Did I just make up a word there? Raggedness. You know? Well, y'all understand what I'm saying. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I say this about uh, the NBA Finals before I get to Cowboy Land. Um. I despise the Boston Celtics. 
you, if you're a Laker fan, you despise the Boston Celtics. So I'm not cheering for them. However, I will say I like, I do like um, Tatum, but not that much. I'm just saying I don't care if Kobe did have his, his plan. I, I care less. He wearing the wrong jersey. That's the bottom line with me. I do not like the Celtics. I do not cheer for the Boston Celtics. I despise the Boston Celtics. I'm, I'm from the 80s. So we know how hot the, the Lake of Celtic feud was back then. I, I was born into it. I was raised to despise the Celtics. And even to this day, I despise the Celtics. So there you go. With it. For those that want to know what I think about it, uh, I had a few people come. Right. I, actually, I'm going to be on a podcast Sunday evening uh Laker podcast coming up. We I hope they ain't talking about the final because if they're talking about the final, I'm that I appreciate the invite, but I ain't, I ain't gonna even do the show. It it hurts me to see the Celtics in, in the finals. I ain't gonna even lie to you. So I, I can't stand it. And it's really gonna hurt if they come out and win this thing. So I, I, I can't stand the Celtics. Coach Marv, I just seen you pop up on Pod Bane. I'm coming to Facebook in just a second. Uh, I was sharing right now, and I'm still sharing. So that's my take on the uh, on the finals right now. I'm hoping Golden State come on in. That's that's what I'm hoping. For. I, I despise the Celtics, so what a passion. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Joe, Mike, hey, hey, y'all. Uh huh. Here we go. All right, let's go, y'all. Let's go. Welcome to the show. Sorry for my jankiness. Again, uh, appreciate y'all again. Y'all forgive me, I usually have this stuff down. Let, let's talk a little bit about pretty much one thing. Uh, really one thing that I, well, maybe two. This is what I want to know. Are you guys excited about what y'all are hearing in OTAs? Are you, I mean... Are you excited? Are, are you becoming engaged? Are you is, is your antennas going up? Hey, hey, what's up? Appreciate you, uh, Jose. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming back. Uh, I got it back together now. Yeah, I, I, I got it back together, Jose. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, uh let me type this in are you guys excited about what you guys are hearing man in, in otas see let me give you my standpoint and then we'll move and most people that play football or have coached football understand what this time really means it's really a point of getting guys primarily that's why they got the rookie guys come in first you see what i'm saying but but it's a it's it's pretty much a period of you know of acclimation. That's what it is. Where where guys are being introduced to the program, the Dallas Cowboy way, the Dallas Cowboy program. They get their playbooks. They start studying. Uh, they they don't get their hands held. You know they, they you study the playbook. You come out to practice. They're just gonna call the play. See how much you uh. Uh, you know how much you know. I, I I don't get excited about this because number one, if you played the game, if you have coached the game, then you already know that this time is when the guys pretty much are in shorts. And y'all gotta forgive me. I'm old school. When the pads come on, that's that's when we're going to start seeing some stuff. Not right now. Not in shorts. This is pretty much giving the guys a preview of the scheduling that they have. You know, meeting at 8, practice at 9, meeting at 1. You know, all that kind of stuff. And getting the bank account set up and, you know, you know, getting a business set up, finding a place to live, and you know, in shorts, you know what I'm saying? And everybody is an all-American 
in shorts. Every, every if you played, you already know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is a all pro in shorts. You can't do no wrong. It's something about them pads though. When them pads come on, and it's time to get a little physical. All the attributes that you may have gotten in shorts, all of a sudden leave <laughs> when the pads come on. That's when you get to hit somebody. You know what I'm saying? And that's when you get to you get your finger swiped at and, and get your arm twisted. And yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? This, this, this is, this, you know. But it's it's exciting because. The guys try to do everything right, and primarily the rookies. They don't usually say nothing. They they're trying to, you know, get everything going, and you know, it's it's, it's nothing really to get it too excited about. However, however, I found something that I think is worth talking about and then i found something that is depressing yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. i see you let me see what's, what's going on uh yeah d max said gotta give boston head coaches prop i agree i, I like the coach is pretty good oh d max you're right probably in there three but we'll be heard and understood the right people Steve McCarty, Kelly. exactly coach marv is already Already on it already, as usual. Let me let me let me say this to you guys. Okay. There are some things that we can dissect and and kind of I ain't saying go crazy over. What's up, Coach Dante? However, there there's there's something in there that I believe we can really, you know, kind of wink our eye at. That, that's what I'm thinking. Now, y'all know I don't get too excited about, about, you know, what's going on until it's time. However, I did hear something. I heard two things. One of them made me excited. One of them made me cautious. I'll tell you what I heard. I'm starting to hear... Mr. Tyler Smith is the truth. Quite sure you guys have heard it too. I'm I'm starting to hear that this kid is going to really mess some people up because there were a lot of people who didn't like the pick. In just case you don't know who Tyler Smith is, I'm quite sure everybody here knows. That was our first round draft pick, uh, a tackle out of Tulsa who uh, got who many cowboy people did not have on their list, and definitely not in the first round. We had Kenyon Green and the kid from Boston College; those were the two linemen that everybody was talking about. Not, not, not Tyler Smith. But he was out the Cowboys, as we found out, had him draft, I mean, ranked higher than um than those two guys. So according to the Cowboys, they got their guy. The fan base didn't think we got the guy. We wanted defense, offense, every, everything else. But they have their guy. Will McClay and Will McClay we trust. Uh, this is this is his dude. And what we are hearing so far, we are hearing, because, you know, in training camp, you know, OTAs, you know, you, you're not going to hear nothing negative at all. Not right now. But there are a few things that have happened that, that deserve a little investigation tell you what i heard maybe you heard it too they tell me that michael parsons lined up and tyler smith was their left tackle on this play because 
Tyron Smith, as usual, was not on the field. That's another whole story within itself, but it, it is what it is. Tyler Smith, our first round pick, was on the outside, and he was going one on one in a pass rush or blocking drill against Michael Parsons. And the word is he stopped him cold. He couldn't get outside. And I didn't see no film about it, but I doubt very seriously that Michael Parsons tried to rush him inside. Hey, Key. Because the kid is so strong, you're wasting time going inside on him. I, I, that's my bet. I didn't see no film. I didn't. I just don't think it's smart to try to get inside on this kid as, as much as they're talking about how strong he is, and I'll get to that in a second. But the word is, is that he got stopped cold. Now, I don't know how y'all feel about that, but I like that. I like that. I'm going to tell you the reason why I like it. And I understand the pads are not on. I get it. But because of who he is and where he was drafted, they got to go on catch him up as much as possible. They got to try him. Now, there, there's no he. Everybody else may be getting you know, 80% or whatever, trust me, he's getting baptized by fire. That's why I like what I heard because of who was going against him. Michael Parsons. Please understand Michael Parsons was going at him. They got to bring this kid up. And whether it's shorts or not, if you're able, I mean, I think Michael Parsons is probably faster in shorts. Then he is on the, with pads on. The reason why it's big, y'all, is because it's one thing and one thing only. It gives that kid confidence. It kind of reminds you of boss man fat last year. Remember, I told y'all now in practice, you know, depending on the position, you know, you can't really just go crazy over it. All right, watch this. But our cornerbacks, because of who our receivers were last year, oh, they they got they they were baptized. When you had Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup, and you might as well throw in Cedric Wilson in there as well, going against our cornerbacks. That and Diggs had to see Cooper and Lamb every day. And maybe get a little bit of gallop. Oh, yeah, that, that's big. That's big. Because you're going against one of the, you know, a few of the best that the league has to offer. And you have to you have to see that every day. Now, whether that's in shorts, whether that's in pads, that is what you call being baptized by fire. Now, if you told me that that Tyler Smith was going up against you know, an undrafted pass rusher, then, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't too hype about it. But if I hear Tyler Smith going against, uh, well, really, give me all of them. I'm serious. Uh, give me, give me any one of our defensive tackles. I love it. I heard he was handling Ridgeway pretty decently. Okay. Give me, let him go against Osi. That's what you call baptized by fire. Let them go against D Law on the outside. Since Parsons got him, let them go against D Law. Let D Law come on the other side. Let him rush. That's what you call getting baptized by fire. Let them go against Darn Armstrong. That, that that's that's good stuff. And to hear that this kid is stopping folks, to hear that he's answering questions. To, to Hall of Famers and Zach Martin and, and, and Tyron Smith, just trying to get as much information as he can, humble, and the teammates already like him. He has the respect of his quarterback already. 
The quarterback, uh, Dak said the man is as strong as Ron Leary was. Now, y'all know how strong Ron Leary was. Y'all know if, if you well, I don't know if you how far you go back. Huh? I, I, I don't know how far you go back, but Ron O'Leary, it, it was a was a, a beast. I'm talking about superhuman strength. And they're saying this kid, well, at least Dak said he reminds him of a Ron Leary. I'm just trying to tell y'all there's that that's that's the thing that you can, you know, you can't take too much out of guys with shorts on. But you can take this one and say, okay. Okay. I mean, we ain't got to the real bit of training camp yet, and this kid is already has a reputation that he he can block. He ain't had a chance to go forward and maul folks yet. We know he can do that. But the pass blocking, it seems as this kid, I mean, we're talking Michael Parsons, y'all. So, I mean, we're talking a a a different level of speed. Huh? You know what I'm saying? I I don't I don't I don't think I I, I want like I said I didn't see the tape I didn't I don't know I just don't think that Michael Parsons rushed him inside because if he get his hands on you you're done that that's 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 the reputation that he's already done getting you know garnered he's already got it. So I'm quite sure Michael Parsons said, let me go ahead and give him something that he going to see when he played Tampa and, Sh- and Shaq Barrett, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, uh, Pierre Paul a little bit, maybe, you know, but he won't see him because he's going to play guard anyway. But he got to play a little left tackle. But he gets to see some of the best rushers. Now, Forgive me, you know, it ought to make his job somewhat easier when he moved down the guard because guys can't rush like the outside guys can. I'm starting, I'm in other words, what I'm trying to tell y'all is I'm starting to I said last show I believe that I'm all in with Tyler Smith, but that right there lets me know. Another thing that in the event, as we all know, if Ty, Tyron Smith gets hurt, we got a guy so far that look like he can handle the left tackle position as well. That's what it looked like. Because anytime you stopping Michael Parsons cold, and we know how fast he is, and to have that type of footwork, that type of first step, that type of slide that you can get over and shut that a kid like that down. Please understand, if you shut Michael Parsons down, the game is going to be easy. But there ain't too many Michael Parsons. I'm not saying Michael Parsons is the only great pass rusher. We know we loaded with him in the league. But Michael Parsons has a gear that not too many people have. And if you shut that down, or you consistently shutting it down. We got something to be excited about. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. The kid looks bigger since he got drafted. He looks bigger. You can tell he's on work. He's in shape. He he's work. He's working out constantly. He he's there at the facility. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, look, huh? Exactly. Saturday night smoke. Saturday night smoke. Say it's not if Tyron Smith gets hurt, is win. That's been that's been the, the the play. You know, hopefully it don't happen, but you know that's the usual for him. However, the Cowboys 
have have may have ran across a jewel. I'm I'm look, I gotta see it, but I I'm I'm started to, to you know, it's just some people that you ain't got to wonder about. You ain't got to play the wait and see game. You know what they're gonna do. I'm starting to lean this way now. I, I didn't watch enough film on the kid, and I understand it was it was Tulsa, and I understand you know it was college, but he he's he's dominant for what I didn't say. Now I, you know what an NFL scout I will say, and then when my eyes say maybe two different things. But I'm telling y'all, I don't know if y'all done looked at this kid. This kid is dominant. I don't, can he do it on the NFL level? I, I don't know. But I'm starting to lean thinking that he can. Because the part that nobody ain't talked about yet, well, we done talked about it, at least on this show we have and on other shows, is this mean streak that he has. He is a pure dog. Huh? I mean, he he he's a dog, and I can't wait till he start going forward on these guys, hitting some folks, and then we're gonna find out at least the complete package. So, again, not we're not gonna go pop champagne bottles right now. We're not gonna do that. However because of who he was going against. And you know they're trying to catch this kid up as much as possible. I'm quite sure Michael Parsons went at him. Whether it was shorts or pads, I believe. I don't think Michael Parsons went no 50%. I know the whistle blew quickly. I probably did. But that engagement... For those one to three seconds, that was that that was probably was real. See what I'm saying? And for him to go against Parsons, these are what we heard, and to shut him down, that is something that you you can you know you need to raise your eyebrow up a little bit. All right, well, Coach Coach Mar, what you say? Let me say, Coach Mar said, "Good start for him. I like like it. Be humble, work." And grass has to be put put in, big show, but great start. Oh, exactly. That's what I was saying. When the when the real camp start, that will kind of give us all we need to know. He's gonna play guard. And he can play tackle. That's what they drafted him for. All right. That's what I heard. I like the report. Here's the second part that I heard, but y'all y'all know me by now. Y'all know what I'm going going to go with this. I heard Zach Martin talking, and if anybody deserves the right to talk, it's Zach Martin. I mean, when he talks, you should listen. Uh, he is who he is. He's a walking Hall of Famer. No doubt about that. And so whatever he says, he's, he, well, he's I don't know if he's a team captain or not, but if he's not, he should be. I think he is. When he talks, you need to listen. And he talked. And the main thing that we heard from him was what mostly everybody on here has been saying for about the last two years, but it's a reiteration. I sum it up real quick. The question was asked towards the end of the interview that with the departure of of uh, Mari Cooper, Gallup not being there, starting off Cedric Wilson being gone. Uh, CD, of course, moving to number one and all this kind of stuff. They pretty much, and I'm paraphrasing, they pretty much were saying that there should be an emphasis on the running game. 
That's what they were alluding to. And Zach Martin immediately answered and said, bottom line, he said that everything, when we were rolling pretty good, it was because of the running game. He said that they fell off at the end. Uh, You know, it wasn't, you know, as hot as it was before. He said that they were, you know, they, they, they just need to get back to running the football. And they and he said that that was a point of emphasis. And they drafted like it. You know, re- remember remember the structure, y'all. And, uh, and when he said that, I like to hear Zach. I I I I gave a you know if, you know if you want to put a picture, I gave a standing ovation for for Zach Martin talking. I I I I, I respected what he said. I did. I respected what what Zach Martin said. The, the remember the structure, y'all. The structure has always worked up until a certain point. The draft has always been pretty decent for us. Will McClay has done an outstanding job in in drafting players and getting these players a good young talent. He, they, he has an eye for talent. You can't even argue with it. Uh, even in free agency, he has an eye for that as well. I mean, look at Javon Kurtz. I mean, everybody want to give Quinn credit, but but um, Will McClay had something to do with that as well. Uh, so McClay knows what he's doing. The problem, as I always have said, is after the draft because they fall into the hands of the coaching staff then. So although I'm hype about what Zach Martin said and the obvious thing that needs to happen. Unfortunately for Zach Martin, he ain't audible or or all of the the plays on the field. And then he most certainly is not calling the plays. So that's why I couldn't get hyped about Zach because we all knew that you supposed to ran the ball last year. We all knew. We all know what happened too. It didn't run the ball. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Zeke Elliott, knee hurt. He had Tony Pollard back there. He wasn't even getting the ball. He wasn't getting it. Which leads, of course, the reason why I'm not hyped, because, you know, I love y'all optimism. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to, and I'm not going to kill y'all stuff. I'm just going to sit back. And 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 wait until Tampa. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit back and wait until Tampa Bay. Because until I see it from Kellen Moore, until I see it from Kellen Moore. See the players, the players are saying, you know, but the players said it last year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The commentators were saying it last year. Everybody was saying it. We we spoiled the whole NFL weeks, uh, weeks two through eight or whatever it was, just running it down folks' throat. Then all of a sudden, we forgot and got allergic to running the ball. That all falls into one hand because of the way that the organization is structured. Usually, they will fall into the head coaching. Head coach's lap, but we all know that Mike McCarthy doesn't have anything to do with the offense. This all falls into two people's hands. Kellen Moore and Dak Prescott. Why Dak Prescott? Because Dak, as we learned last year, has the ability to change calls at the line of scrimmage as he should being a quarterback. It's his job to put the team in the best play possible. Sometimes you got to squash the the play that was called and call another play. 
you got to do that. Every every quarterback does it, so Dak is not the exception. But between but the plays that are being called falls into the hands of Lethal Killing Moore primarily. Dak Prescott on game day. That's where the blame is. If you want to get blame. And, and until, look, we drafted well. I, I even heard this now. You know, Schultz is talking. Oh, he talked last week, talking about how his blocking, you know, he was drafted as a blocker, and he was out of Stanford. Uh, and talking about how he's gained weight and, and, and he's blocking. And then, uh, it, the book was out on Jake Ferguson, the second tight end that we have now. The book was out on him saying that he can catch the ball, but his blocking is not good. He gives up there talking. Jake did said, I, you know, my blocking is on, on point, you know, saying his blocking is good. And I'm like, dude. See? So, so you drafted, you drafted Tyler Smith to be a physical guy. You drafted supposedly Jake to be a physical guy. You got a uh, ball coming back. Josh ball. He's a physical guy. You got Connor McGovern. Who's a physical guy. Zach is physical. Tyron Smith is physical. You got all these guys that are fit. You got a physical running back starting running back. You don't have a finesse guy. You got a, you got a, everybody on there had even Tyler Biotis. Everybody on the line has steel. Everybody, Terrence Steele, everybody has a, a label on them for being physical. The whole line, the whole line, center, right and left guard, right and left tackle. Everybody has a, you don't, you don't look at, Neither one of them on the start line and use the word finesse. But the problem is you have a finesse offensive coordinator. That's what the problem is. And until I see different, because I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't mean to bust, bust the bubble. And, and, and I understand Zach talking. I, I love it. I know what he's saying. But the offensive coordinator don't match that. It is like night and day. You got a physical all world guard who primarily, who primarily bags up more than he goes forward. You got a dom. Uh, uh, I'm talking about a Hall of Fame guard. You definitely have a Hall of Fame left tackle. Both of them are first ballot, if you ask me. Easy. Walk in. Five years. As soon as they retire, I think the NFL, you got to wait five years before you years before the Hall of Fame. When the five years go after they retire, they're walking straight into Canton, Ohio. I don't even know why they got to wait, to be honest with you. But anyway, they, they're going straight in. They're known for moving people. You can't move people bagging up. What am I saying? It's simple. You look at the end of the box score, Dak Prescott has 50, almost 40, 40, between 40 and 50 throws a game. You look at the box score, Zeke Elliott only got 12 carries. Tony Pollard only got three. You know, if you get 15 carries out of Zeke, you know, this I ain't talking about last year. I'm talking about the year before that. It, I mean, we we run running the football. Do y'all remember the Philadelphia game when when Ben DiNucci was playing? Why in the world is Ben DiNucci throwing the ball forty times? You know, all this sidearm swinging, you know, throws he was doing, you, and the game was close. You got a Zeke Elliott just play ball control football. I don't care because they got eight men in the box. You got to stay committed to the running game. That is something that Kellen Moore has never done. So I, I can't get excited. I can't. I, I appreciate Zach. I do. I appreciate Zach Martin. But unfortunately, he ain't calling no plays. See what I'm saying? 
So you can get hype about Ty. Look, it don't make it. Look, if 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 Tyler Smith this year drops back, you know, twenty five percent more than he does going forward, we 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 didn't do right by him, by the draft pick. Kellen Moore is a a a finesse pinball machine, mad in twenty two type offensive coordinator. That's what he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is a a a you know NBA two K type coordinator. That's what he is. That's what he does. He, he's not. He's he's not. The word physical and Kellen Moore just don't match. Huh? I'm just. I'm just. I'm look. I'm, I'm caught. Look. I don't care what. Look. I, we getting ready for the season. We all gonna put our cowboy gear on. Some of us are gonna go to Dallas. Some of us gonna get to the game. I don't. You know. We gonna cheer. We gonna get loud in front of the TV. We we gonna we gonna we gonna do all this stuff. But y'all know the truth. The word physical and Kellen Moore do not match. I don't care what y'all say. And you know it's the truth. You know it is. The word finesse matches. Oh yeah, that's him. Yeah. And it's a time for finesse. It's a time for unique play calling. It's a time to try to outwit the defensive coordinator with your play call. It's a time for that. And Kellen Moore does that. Oh, he checked the boxes on finesse. Oh, that there's there's not too many better. I mean, and this is having the number one offense in the league. There's not too many better. I'll give you that. When it comes to play design, I guess, and try to fool somebody, hey, he can do that. But when it's time to get in the trenches, though, when it's time to play bully ball, when it's time to say, look, you're here, I'm here, I'm going to move you over there, and there's nothing that you can do about it because I'm going to have my offensive line impose their wheels on your defense and it ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm going to have this this running back that is physical with an offensive line that is physical. We just going to go forward and we going to stop keep chopping this wood until you give up. That ain't killing more. Y'all know that. Yeah, that's not killing more. It's not. You're trying to make, you're trying to justify Dak Prescott and trying to make him an MVP candidate when in actuality you have the talent, the talent to be the number one rushing offense in the entire NFL. You have that type of talent. You have it. Instead, we in the bottom, we're in the bottom of running or, 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 or in the low 20s when it comes to rushing attack. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. So although I heard Mr. Martin appreciate it, I actually love what he said. I did. I loved it. But I knew he wasn't talking about nothing because he don't have no control. Because what he's saying should have been done last year. And it was not done because Kellen Moore had to be Kellen Moore. Huh? I see you, coach. You see what I'm saying? So when it come to, you know, when it come to the, now, now please understand here. I, when it comes to the passing game, I got more confidence in him in the passing game than, than actually running because I know he's going to pass the ball. 
I done seen it too much. I I I don't believe it. I don't. I heard Zach. We we're gonna put an emphasis on the running game. What does that really mean? I mean, Ezekiel is getting it 12, 13 times a game. So what they mean? The emphasis, well, we're gonna raise it up to what, 15, 16 now? Okay, Pollock getting it average three, three to four times. What that mean? Uh that you would you know what he gonna get it five times now? You know. I, I can't, I can't, I can't get excited because, uh, you know, I, and I just don't see Kellen Moore. As much as everybody's talking about the running game, I just don't see Kellen Moore locking himself up in the room and having an epiphany and all of a sudden coming out. Now he, he run the ball nonstop. I just, I just can't see. He done had Ezekiel Elliott for years, didn't run. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He, he he had all this. He still don't know. He still can't can't figure out what to do with Tony Pollard. He, Tony Pollard been there. He still ain't figured it out. He still don't know how to put put him in the right formation. I can't. I can't. I I I, I can't give it to Kellen. I can't. Y'all gonna have faith. I mean, I I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, had Pollard all these years. You still ain't figured out to put Pollard and Ezekiel in the game at the same time. That caused a matchup problem. See what I'm saying? You know, Dak liked to distribute the ball a whole lot. We all know that. Okay. But 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 why are you paying $20 million to a guy in Amari Cooper and you didn't give him the ball? See? Y'all see what I'm saying? Huh? Everybody want to know how the offense is going to do this. How the offense is going to do that. You, 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 you have, you have everything you need. You have everything you need, you know, at least right there. You got two weapons on this offense. And I ain't even said it yet, but really dove into it. But you got two weapons on this offense that are nightmares for defensive coordinator. I mean, defensive coordinator. C.D. Lamb is a problem. Tony Pollard is a problem. Common sense tell me that they need to be on the field together a whole lot. I understand Zeke is our, our, our guy, but they need to. You got two guys that's gonna be mismatch problem. I, I look, he still ain't figured out how to put Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard in the game. I know I'm asking for too much now to ask to put CD and Tony Pollard in the game at the same time. He didn't even get that right in two years. He didn't do it. Yeah, and then somebody said, "Well, wait, he did something right. He had the number one offense in the league." Yeah, we had the number one offensive league, and but we could have had so much better. Number one offensive league didn't show up the last part of the year. Cause why? Because it was time to get physical. That's just the bottom line. Once Thanksgiving got here and it started getting cold, and it's time to, to get down in the trenches now. He was nowhere to be found. Kellen Moore was nowhere to be found. You had defenses bullying us, pushing us back. That's because the play call was the bag up, pass block, first down, pass block, second down, pass block, third down, pass block, next series, first down, run for two yards for Zeke, second down and eight, pass, shotgun, third, shotgun. Come on, man. Uh, y'all, y'all know me. If you've been following me, you know what time it is. We down inside the five yard line. First down, shotgun. Second down, shotgun. Third down, shotgun. And I'm like, when you gonna let the offense go forward on these guys? I mean, it's just common sense to me. So I can't get hype. I'm sorry. I can't get hype. 
I can't. I can't. Y'all can say whatever y'all want to say. I don't care. You gotta have faith. No, no, no. I, I gotta have. I, I gotta have some reality too. And the reality and the truth is, Kellen Moore, overall, depending on who he's playing, he bullies teams that can't match up. But teams that can match up and are proud, you know, a little bit better, he gets punked out. I'm sorry. That, 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 that's all I'm saying. He gets punked out. When it's time to, to go ahead and get dirty. You don't know how. His play calling is not dirty. His play calling is pretty. Yeah, Joe said Kellen Moore. <laughs> Joe said Kellen Moore will pass on third and one and run on third and 15. I mean, come on. I mean, look, I'm not the only one. So when I hear Zach Martin, I'm not, I like what he's saying because he the one that got to do it and he knows what needs to be done. He knows that we need to run the football. Zach Martin knows that. But the question is, <laughs> are we going to do it? And the track record shows Kellen Moore is not going to do it. You let Brady jump on us, you know, 10 to, you know, 10 to 3 or 13 to 3, and it's just the second quarter. You watch what happens. I mean, look, what offensive coordinator, look, let's just go back to last year at Tampa. What offensive coordinator gives up on the run in the first quarter? That's what Kellen Moore did. He refused to run the ball. Just Dak, just bagging up every play. Just, I mean, Dak had an outstanding game, but good Lord. You ain't trying to run. Do y'all remember those horrible stats that they had last year? The Tampa Bay game? Zeke didn't carry the ball, I think, about eight times. That may have been about it. Come on, man. This is Kellen Moore, y'all. And because it's killing more, I can't get hype. Y'all can get hype. I can't get hype. All right. That's my tirade. I'm done. <laughs> phone line open. Y'all see it on the screen there. Open up the phone line. Y'all call in. Oh, I already got it. Coach already in. Coach on pod bean. I see you. Got the invite coming. Coach, you in the house, man. What's, what's going on, Big Show? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Man. Turn my music down a little bit. Turn your, turn your phone down here to echo. Okay. What's up, Cofield? I see you, John. That's better. Talk to me, Coach. I, I hear you. Come on. Okay, I got two points, man. And one of them, one I want to touch on because I, I sent you that that message to touch on the second one because it seems like we just need to go strictly talking about defense for the for the start of the season because we're going to depend on this defense to win us a championship if Kellen doesn't uh, do what he needs to do. But this is to echo your point about the running game. Zach Martin did just, just say this in this, this offseason. He said the same thing after the, the New England game about getting back to our identity in the running game. And we mm -hmm. did run the ball in the running game in the New England because we ran the ball 33 times. Mm -hmm. If we want to win, Cowboy fans, and we want to win a Super Bowl, check these stats out I'm about to give you. And this is all you have to do. We must have 30 attempts running the ball in a game. Mm -hmm. Every game. That's And I'm not saying 30 by one guy. I'm talking about a multitude of Tony Pollard, Zeke, some carries by Dak, some carries by C.D. Lamb on certain things, maybe but 30 carries in a game. That's our benchmark. The reason why I would say that, since 2016, we are 42 and 6 when we have more than 30 carries in a game. That's pretty good, isn't it? 
<laughs> last year, we were 9-0 and of the 12 victories that we got. We were 9-0 and when we had 30 carries in the game. And one sorry, of those games... Go ahead, I'm sorry. One of those games, when we talk about the passing game and people want to say it's not exciting football, we be we cloud of dust, you no know, running. One of those games was the New England game where we had 33 carries and that threw for a record 400 and some yards. Mm-hmm. But it kept us on schedule. Yeah. 30 carries in a game is our benchmark. And what I would say to you in those stats, that tells you the history and the mentality of what you have to get to if you are coaching, if you have any salt as a coach. And when we talk about analytics, people want to talk about analytics, but they want to try to switch analytics to suit what they feel, what they what they want to say and it, it being exciting. But the analytics, if we want to talk about the analytics, the analytics say, it says, if you're 42 and six since 2016, when you got 30 carries, it all points that you need to get to what? 30 <laughs> carries. <laughs> Hello. So again, I go back to the team that beat us in the playoffs. Would you would people say that San Francisco had more talent than we had? I'm even talking about from the offensive line through the receivers. We can count Debo, but can you name another receiver on their team other than Kittles? That's can it. You say they, off- huh? they had two. They had two matchup problems: Debo and Kittle. That's it. And Kittles had very little catches in that game. Mm-hmm. I think okay. maybe one or two. But when I, when uh, Shanahan has a benchmark, and they said it in this game. And every game that he goes into, he's going to get 30 carries. He needs 30 carries in his running game for his offense to be efficient. Mm-hmm. And he had to come Sean McVay. Sean McVay. Super Bowl uh, uh, coach. Mm-hmm. When he went into the Super Bowl game, when they talked about, he said, about his keys to victory with the Odell Beckham and the and the Cooper Cup and the great quarterback, he said that he needed 30 carries about his running backs in that game for them to be productive in the game, and they ran the ball 30 times even though they only had 45 yards, but they got 30 carries. And they kept them on schedule, and they kept their defense, kept the ball away from the other people's offense so it allowed his defense to be dominant and they won the game. And and the play action was still working. He did want, that's right. And he did want to put the pressure on his quarterback where you knew he was in passing situations because he didn't want him to turn the football over. Even though he turned it over, but he wanted to keep it away, keep it from him turning the ball over instead of two times, three or four times. Yep. Mm-hmm. 30 carries, people. This gets us to our goals. This keeps us on schedule. Zach Martin was talking about one thing and Zeke and, and, and the craziest thing about it is big show. It was echoed by Ezekiel Elliott's interview locker room interview when he talked about the same thing as Zach Martin talked about the offense is having consistency, not mm-hmm. going so far up and down. And Zeke made this comment. What gives you consistency? Physicality. There you go. Physical come first. Finesse can be easily done. Same thing Zach Mark was saying. The running game opens up everything for these receivers, and you don't have to have top receivers because if you have a control on the running game, as San Francisco shows you, you will mm-hmm. get guys open because they fear the physicality of your offense. No doubt about it. Now, that, that's the offense, and I'm going to get with a last point let you go. Since, since I know that we're going to have to hang our hat on the defense. Mm-hmm. I put in there, I gave you a thing about Michael Parsons. Uh-huh. Michael Parsons' interview was great because he talked about, he showed that dog mentality, that, a, that 
that dog mentality when you were talking about he, you know, the competition with him and 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 D Law, which I love that to see that because the true dogs don't have no problem going out there and say what they want to do and who they want to beat, right? Exactly. exactly. So, but he started talking about they started asking about the Aaron Donald film. You know, Aaron Donald did some thing where he was talking about the, all the, the the technique things he studied to get get by guys, and he said, yeah. Um, yeah, Aaron Donald, that comes from great experience. And, and, and Parson was talking about how he's trying to learn how teams are going to attack him and the small things to, for him to keep on improving and being a better player uh, ne- uh, next year from the defensive line and the linebacker position. And then he also talked about how he was trying to tell the young guys because he said, I was out there and we got four, you know, uh, rookie linebackers out there with me and I'm trying to tell them not to take the coaches, you know, direction too far just to try to keep playing hard and don't, you know, go too far um, to the right or left when they tell them something because, they, you know, the coaches are just trying to teach them. But mm-hmm. Michael Parsons is in his second year and probably in his fourth year, third year of really playing linebacker. Exactly. He is just playing off strictly dog and raw talent, but he doesn't know the small things that can get him over Mm -hmm. where his talent can explode and he can figure things out before it happens, which will make him a better player. He gets that with D-Law because he can go out there and work with D-Law on the defensive line. Last year, he worked with Randy Gregory. He worked with D-Law because they're veteran guys that have learned how to do the small things. And then Michael goes out there and uses the small things along with his athletic ability, and he gets 13, 14 sacks. Mm -hmm. But at the linebacker room, he is the senior member of of good play. Mm -hmm. This is why a guy like Barr, can come in and partner up with, with a with a L, with a with a uh, Parsons and teach him, man. You know how I got to the Pro Bowl and how what I learned in these nine years of when my athletic abilities kind of started to slip. I learned some small things to keep me at a high level and teach him these things in a one year time. Could sign him to a one year contract, one team me, give him one year. He Bar can also help. Cox and the rest of these young linebackers to get up to speed, and then when Bar moves on next year, you got guys that have been seasoned by a former All Pro veteran. Exactly. Exactly. That's what you need because if you get that, it's not about how much Bar. It's not about how great Bar is going to play because Bar is going to play good. Any veteran linebacker that's got some playing the building, going to play great beside a guy like Michael Parsons because Michael Parsons' athletic ability is going to make the games easier for them and their smarts is going to make the game easier for Michael Parsons. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's, that's it, no, no two points I had to, to, to get out there. 42-6, and six, Big Show. Well, well, the, the, the other one, somebody put down in the, I think it was Joe. Joe, uh, Joe said, uh, uh, there it is. Joe said that when Zeke goes over 100 yards, the Cowboys 29 and 0. 29 <laughs> so, and 0, they went 75%, of the, they went 80% of the games when he gets at least 18 carries. I mean, I don't care if it's 15 and 15, I don't care if it's uh, Zeke gets 12 and Tony Pollard gets. Uh, just get the thirty. <laughs> just, just get, get the 30. thirty carries, <laughs> and that yeah. gives a physical presence to your offense. I'm not asking Kellen Moore to to change his. I'm just asking him to add a physical presence to your mm-hmm. offense, and you will get to do your tricks a whole lot easier. Zach Martin was saying he wants this deep this line to get back to the tone setters, as the what the team looks up to for being the tone setters of the team. And if we are trying to, if they keep trying to say, we trying to preach a physical mentality, where does a physical mentality start in a team? It starts with two areas, your offensive line and then your defense. Yeah. 
Exactly. Exactly. I, let's, I, keep pushing the, let's keep pushing the big show because, no, we keep pushing it. I'm going to do what I can yeah. until I see something different. If I don't well, see you know, nothing different, I'm going to light them up, Doc. That, that's hey, that's 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 what we supposed to do. But I don't I don't think we have no problem on the defensive side. I think they they gonna they gonna do those things, and we hope that they get. And it's not the, the first game. I'm not worried about the first game. I'm worried about the first game. Well, I, what I want to see Kellen Moore do, and I'm gonna say this right quick. I'm not worried about the first game because I believe we probably gonna do that. We probably gonna come out physical. What I'm worried about is that game. That we we have a problem to run the ball, and we and and then we have to turn to the pass. And Dak has this big game of four hundred yards, and we win the game. And all the pundits and all the haters out there start getting all the PlayStation and and John Madden's people start start praising. Oh man, what a passing attack! Man, look at all this passing. Man, what a little CD Lamb had a great game. Man, they can't can't stop this passing attack. Are you going to listen to the crowd or then you're going to go back the next week and get right back to your mentality of game and stick yeah. to what gets you to don't go for this fool's goal because we stopped running the ball last year right after Dak threw for 400 some yards against New England. We felt that everybody was praising Dak for this great game and then we ain't run the ball no more. Exactly. Which is what I, which is what I always say about more. He will turn into his regular self. I can't. I can't give him no credit yet. I. I wait and see. I see what he gonna do against Cincinnati. I'm. Gonna, I agree with you. Tampa gonna be Tampa. Let's see what you do against a physical defense like like Cincinnati was. Let's see if you stay committed to the running game. Will you stay committed, or will you even try? You just gonna give up on it. And so far, Kellen Moore's. I guess is is what it says. He don't do it. So I see we, for, we are nine and zero with running the ball thirty times. Let's say we were ran the ball thirty times for all seventeen games. What could our record have been? Oh my god! We probably <laughs> would have had another two more games to our list. We'd been number one seed in the number one seed in the. Uh, in, in, we would have beat Arizona. We ran the ball. We would beat Arizona by. We would we would crush Arizona. We ain't had to no run the football. No question. Appreciate you, Coach. All right, Big Joe. Thank you, man. All right. That's my coach there. As he done came in and done set the world on fire, as always. He always do that. Appreciate him popping in. You know, Coach brought out a, a nice point. Uh, hey, hey, John Cofield. Uh, some guy came on Twitch. I think it was a little box as he's asking. He going fantasy football. I I I think you ought to keep. I'm gonna answer this question because I play fantasy football as well. Uh, CD ought to be. CD has 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 the ability to be a. I mean, you know, just last year with the ball getting distributed, he was over a thousand yards. He made the Pro Bowl. I mean, but. You know, he got the pro ball by default. You know, the guys didn't want to go, so he was next up on the list. But pro bowl go on his record. I think he's going to be a dominant receiver, personally. Uh, I think he's going to be that good. Uh, and he's young. And so far, he's, he has no injury prone. So, yeah, I would keep him in the dynasty league. I would. Uh, John says... Mr. Cofield says, notice Mike Parsons not trying to learn on the LV. He's getting his tip from D-Law, and he even knows LV is not that guy. Well, not only that, John, he's also getting uh, taught by DeMarcus Ware. Uh, and he's actually going to see Ware, I believe, once this is over with, to keep working. Uh, he, is, he is going to, he's been working out with DeMarcus Ware. So we all know what DeMarcus Ware was all about. Uh, and that's who he's been hanging around. So, I mean, you can't do nothing but get better by hanging around that that guy uh, and learning from him as well. But you, you're absolutely right. Uh, Michael is going to be fine, man. Mike, Michael is going to, yeah, Michael is going to be, a, you know, barring catastrophic injury 
this kid is gonna walk into the Hall of Fame. I'm already. I said it. I said it at draft time last year because I knew he was just that different. If he would have strictly lined it up on the edge last year, he would have had 20 sacks last year in his rookie year. You got to keep in mind, this kid was getting sacked going up the middle. Of course, he got on the edge with it, and then a lot of times he didn't rush the pass because he had linebacker responsibilities. So, I mean, this kid would have had 20 sacks. No question. No question. 20 plus. He's he's that different. He's he he has he has speed that not too many guys had at that to be that big, uh, and that's you know that wide that strong. It's not too many guys that can do what he can do. I'm talking about in the history of the league. In the history of the league, so this kid is there now. As as coach said before. As far as Michael Parson goes, th- this guy, you know, was just doing it off pure physical ability. He don't know hand technique yet. He don't know the how to, you know, how to how to you know moves and counter moves and pass rushing. This kid was pretty much just getting it straight off speed and sheer will going up the middle. I mean, did this dude he ain't learned the game yet? Coach Coach Marv was right. He ain't played linebacker but a couple of years. He's still learning. You know, so the, the sky's the limit on him. And now you add in a a a Hall of Famer that Demarcus Ware will be should have went in last year, but you know he'll get in probably the next year. Next year, this kid is 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 learning from him. And this, this that, that that can only benefit you. See, when you have the physical ability that he has, once you mix that in with some technique, oh my God, you have a defensive player of the year, which he almost was last year. Some say he really was, other than that TJ Watt. You see what I'm saying? But you know, Watt had a great year. But this kid is just, you know, he ain't even scratched the surface. Or what he gonna be like? He is a legitimate monster. He is. Now you can get excited about that. That he's already said he's going to Demarcus Ware. He ain't going home for no vacation, and he ain't going, you know, to go to hang out, get a last, you know, bit of, of vacation time in before training camp. He's already said he's going to see Demarcus Ware. That's gonna be his workout partner. And the knowledge and wisdom that Ware can give him, oh my goodness, get ready. Now, Coach said something about Anthony Barr. Appreciate you, John. That's just the truth. Uh, he said something about Anthony Barr. And, you know, things that we should do. We don't do. I mean, we had the money to sign Bobby Wagner. We we had it. We didn't do it. I mean, that, that this is where this is where again the front office comes into play, and they always don't mess it up. I mean, certain things you can do. And, and I understand what Stephen Jones said. We love our guys and we're younger. We want to see the young. I mean, look, when you got a chance or you at least you think you have a chance to go to another level with a team, it don't take a lot of players to make it or coaches. You just need one player, one or two players in key spots that will carry your team from a 11-win team to a 13-win team. That'll take you from your 13, it'll take you to a 15-win team. Anthony Barr and his experience, and he still got plenty of gas left, and he can hit you. He can cover. This would make our team better. 
Bobby Wagner would have made our team better. But we want to cheap our way out of everything. That's Stephen Jones, of course. We want to cheap our way out of everything. See what I'm saying? I, I, there, there's another name, Vaughn Miller. Uh, you know, and he signed for a gigantic contract. I'm not quite sure how really serious he was, Joe, but Vaughn Miller was out there. We probably tried to cheap our way out of him, give him an insult of an offer. And I believe that's probably what will happen with Bobby Wagner as well. Uh, matter of fact, let me take that back. They, they, I think Bobby said they, he didn't, they, they talked, but they didn't offer him a contract. I mean, good God. What? So this is what Steven Jones missed the team. Up. All you need is one player, one or two players. See, what the coach was saying is what I've been saying for, for a while now, that the defense would be the strongest unit on this team. So why not stack the defense as best as you can to make it not only a top 10 defense? No, the, my idea is if you get a start, see, if we would have just signed Bobby Wagner, this defense would have, I would have been hollering from the rooftop. This defense is a top five defense with Bobby Wagner. With all the players we got right now, you just throw in Bobby Wagner to this team that we have now on defense. We are a top five defense coming into the league. I mean, coming to the season. I have no doubt about that. I think we top 10 right now. I think we are. You throw an Anthony Barr in here, you're entering into close again. You're entering close into a top five category. That's how valuable he is. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly, John. Coach said and Anthony Hitchison. Yeah. That's another one. You, you need just need a good vet. Okay. I know y'all love want to see Cox. You know, he you gotta keep in mind, he ain't just played you no know, linebacker, y'all. He ain't played with a few games last year. That's that's essentially a rookie linebacker coming out there. Love his speed, but they gonna, you know, when you're a rookie, the offensive coordinator job is to confuse you, make your eyes confused which is easy for for a young guy. I ain't got to say nothing about LVE. I mean, you know, how many games is he going to play? That's number one. Oh, Anthony Barr would have been big, which leads to, which leads to this. I want I want to show y'all this real quick. Let me, let me, let me set this up. So y'all can see this. Let me set this up. I got to show y'all this. Because I pulled it up while Coach was talking. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Look at this, y'all. The Cowboys, all this yip yap and talk. I don't know if y'all can see that. I hope you can. The Cowboys have, for those on pod, pod being, I'll read it to you. The Cowboys in cap space have $29.6 million under, under cap. I mean, they're $29.6 million under the cap. Why are we holding on to the money? Can y'all help me? I mean, why? I mean, all this work and, and what, 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 we just, we just happy because we under the cap. I mean, we just, look, I'm, I'm the salary cap champion of the world. That's, that's Steve and John. You see how much money we say? Look at it. See, you're sitting there. Okay. When you going to spend a little bit of that, please, sir. You got good football players that's out there. Look, y'all see that? Do y'all see that? $29.6 million under the cap, which means you can afford an Anthony Barr. Ah, no, no, Cowboy. I, Cowboy Jay, you're right. Joe, you're right. However, 
what kind of window do you have? See, I'm I'm different. Last year's team, <clears throat> I believe, could have went real far. And because the team was there, you don't need but a couple pieces to add to it because you're in the win now mode. I ain't worried about two years from now. The window going to be gone. Tyler Smith will be gone. I know some of y'all say, well, we got Tyler Smith now. Okay, I, uh, whatever. Zach Martin may be under, you know, in a couple years. He might be ready to hang it up. I ain't got time to wait two years from now. Ezekiel Elliott is not going to be the guy that he is two years from now. He's not. While he still have some gas left, you need to win right now. D-Law in two years. Come on now. I, I, I don't know that. See what I'm saying? I don't know that. Every year be gone in two years. Diggs will be probably, hopefully, pray to God we never lose him. But, I mean, come on now. We got a window to win now. I ain't got I ain't got time to be trying to say, Stephen Jones killed me. We we got there are some good football players that are out there that will help your team just with them walking in the door. You know what they're going to do on the field. Just walking in the door, they're going to be, and I shouldn't have to wait until somebody get hurt before you go ahead and put your foot down. Go on, stack the deck now. You don't need one or two players. Good God. Go get me, go get me Anthony Barr. I ain't asking for, I ain't asking for, no. I ain't asking for first team all pro. Go get me, Joe, we ain't going to be able to pay shows. Good point. I ain't brought that up. I was going to say something about that last week. Did you see what Njoku signed for in Cleveland? They're, they're not going They're not gonna pay Dalton Schultz uh, uh, next year uh, unless they're going to pay him this year, which is what they ought to do. That will free up even more cap money if they go ahead and pay Schultz long term since they probably making the decision on it. Go on, pay him long term. But you ain't going to do that now because Njoku messed up the whole thing. You see what I'm saying? Maybe I don't know. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can help you there. Let me see if I can help you there. I, I, I forgot the numbers. I'm going to pull it up. David, I don't know how to say it, Njoku. Let's see, let's see. There it is. Y'all see that? Look at that. Do y'all see that? There it is. You really believe it? And you know, you know how the, the, the contracts go. You know, and you know Joku ain't that much better than than David Schultz. I mean, hey, Dalton Schultz, I'm sorry. Do y'all see that? You let Dalton Schultz have somewhat of a decent gear. And then you tell me what you think Dalton Schultz is going to ask for. He's not getting that. There's no way in the world he's getting that. Exactly. Schultz had better stats than, than David and Joku, but look what Njoku got. $56.75 million. I, 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 I don't. I, I I don't I don't know I I I, I don't know <laughs> this may in other words this may be your last year with Dalton Schultz because of this contract right here because he's going if he have a better year than Joku he's going to ask for more than this I, I, I look he got 4 years $56.75 million. One, that's one, 16, one, 16. That's 16 million dollars a year. 28 million dollars in guarantees. That's what he gonna ask for. And got an 11 points, 11.4 
a million dollar signing bonus. Come on, y'all. They, they look, they, if they really serious about Schultz, they need to go ahead and sign now, but he may ask for this. You're not gonna, you're not gonna pay that guy that. This and 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 look and check it out, which may explain why you got uh the kid from from Wisconsin now. That please understand, they really want him to step up now. He ain't got time. He don't have time. Ferguson has to go ahead and play right. I'm talking about he got to go on show what he can do now because the Cowboys are not going to pay that guy. Now, if they do, they're crazy. And, and we are talking to Stephen Jones. And you know how they like their guys and all that kind of stuff. Did Look, if, if they paid that to Dalton Schultz, they're crazy. I'm not trying to knock Schultz because he's – but he ain't that, that type of tight end. That type of money there is reserved for the upper echelon of tight ends. Kittle, Dan, you know, Waller, uh, Mark Andrews from Baltimore, those type of guys. You know, Kelsey, you know, the kid from well, – he ain't in Cincinnati no more. The kid from Cincinnati last year. Those guys deserve that type of money. The, the Joku ain't and not that guy, but he got paid that. He messed it up for everybody. See what I'm saying? So Dalton Shoes probably gonna pay on play under this franchise tag, and then you're gonna let him walk because you'll be crazy to pay him that. You'll be crazy to pay him that now. That'll be loony. But we are talking Stephen Jones, right? See what I'm saying? So what if you have that money, twenty six point nine million dollars under the cap? Why won't you just go ahead and get, you know, you're depending on, it is just common sense to me. You're depending on LVE, a guy who stay hurt. Then you got Cox coming off injury, a ACL, who hasn't played linebacker. He will essentially be a rookie. Yes, he's fast. No doubt about it. Yes, he can hit. No doubt about it, but he's a really going to be a rookie. Why not go get strengthen your weakest part on your defense? The weakest part on our defense is the linebacker position. We got one elite player, and then we got a, two guys that's going to be our starters that are questionable in health, questionable in, 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 in experience, as far as Cox goes, we got a linebacker in LVE who ever since he had the surgery with his neck, you I mean, it, it's only going downhill. Why not go get some veteran help? It just don't make any sense to me, especially since you got the money. And the bar not going to cost that much money. He's not. He's not going to cost that much money. I don't understand it. And I shouldn't have to wait until we get the report that LV has neck soreness or Byron Cox, you know, they got a twitch in his, in his, in his giddy up. No, go on, get these guys now. Make Cox compete since he think he's going to be the main. But you know how the Cowboys are. We want to get that type of production from guys, you know, who are on, you know, cheap contracts. We're going to play it out and get as much as we can for these guys. They tell me you ain't really just serious about winning, too. I'm just going to throw that in. And the bar should have been signed. Hmm? He should have been signed by now. So, you know, I don't know what it is. I, you know, uh, at the same time, he still... Nobody else is signed to me. Either. Maybe it's something going on. I don't know. Or, 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 and be honest with you, those type of guys don't want to get signed now anyway because they don't really want to go to training camp. And they'll refuse to sign. A lot of the older guys don't want to do training camp. That's a fact as well. Those type of guys are ready to go week one. They know what to do. 
They done seen every defensive playbook there is. They know what to do. Exactly. Greg, Greg says you talking about uh Deion Jones. Deion Jones. Be a great pickup. Linebacker from Falcons might be available. He knows Quinn's system and he played well for Quinn. I like Deion Jones, actually. A lot of people say he a bust, but he's not a bust. He just didn't meet the full expectations for where he was drafted. The kid is fast. He's tall. He's physical. Yeah, I take him too. I'm saying that the money is there. What are we waiting on? Just so you can carry it over and say, hey, I'm the best salary cap man in the world. I'm the greatest. You know, he need a belt, you know, like a championship belt. That's what he need. He need a championship belt. He need he need a championship belt like I get. He need he need he need a championship belt to say the world's heavyweight champion. That 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 this is what Stephen Jones need. He need that recognition to say I am the greatest salary cap guru in the NFL. That that this is what Stephen Jones need. So we can so we can go on please him and satisfy him one time and say he the best. He's the best. He's the best. He 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 know how to chop down a salary cap. He know how to let Plus people one, go. Eight zero three nine six zero three five eight four. Hold on a second. I got another call. It might be call from Father Coach Ball. Here come Coach. Six. Come on, Coach. Man, you 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 got me fired up now, uh, Big Show. I know, I know. You, you, you got me fired up because you you got the. You got the championship belt out there for Steven Jones. Yeah, I'm well, he lost that championship belt. Uh-huh. No, he lost it. To the Rams? <laughs> he lost it when he put the trash out tag on Dalton Schultz. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. that messed the whole thing up. Yeah. I, I, I throw one more in, Coach. He lost it when, when the Rams just kept signing everybody and got a Super Bowl trophy out of it. How about that one? <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so... Let me, let me explain. Let me explain why he messed up. For you. Maybe you're listening, might not understand why he he messed up with Dalton Schultz. You put franchise tags on franchise players, uh-huh. yeah, not role players. There you go. Got a case. Now, if you want to say Dalton Schultz, he had a good year. Yes, he had a great year, mm-hmm. but he is not a game changer. So when you franchise tag him at eleven, uh, basically eleven million dollars, his his the contract started off at eleven million dollars, basically. Mm-hmm. You painted yourself in the corner when Dalton Schultz signed it, mm-hmm. because now if you draft a tight end yeah. and some other tight end sign, now you go you at the point of saying, okay, well Dalton Schultz is asking for in Joku money. Yeah, go ask for it. He'd be stupid. Yeah. He'd be stupid if he don't ask for it. To be honest with you, right? That's a, that's what he's asking for. Yeah, he, but yeah. you Cowboys cannot believe that if we got rid of Dalton Schultz next year, if Dalton Schultz had a great year, mm-hmm. you can't say that I'm going. When it comes down to signing guys, let's say Dalton Schultz has sixty five catches and uh, nine hundred yards and seven touchdowns. Mm-hmm. You're going to take the money to sign Dalton Schultz and not sign the money to sign to, to, to Diggs? Exactly. Exactly. So, when you paint yourself in a corner like that, now, you already overstated yourself with Dalton Schultz. Where this is how I would have handled Dalton Schultz. I'm not saying Dalton Schultz is not a good player. I think he's is, is come a long way and is a good player. But I would have offered Dalton Schultz. He's coming off a, a lower level contract. I would have offered him something maybe like APR eight million dollars a year for me, four years, thirty two million guaranteed, twenty million, or start out at seven million and he gave me a counter offer. We're not going no farther eight million. And if you don't take the take the offer, then we're gonna let you let the market test what, what they're going to bring you. 
I'm guarantee you nobody would give him no fourteen million dollars. No way. And just like Cleveland should have gave you Joku fourteen, but they did, and he and, and he gonna ask for it. I guarantee that. If they give him fourteen, big show. If they give him fourteen million, then I'm going to sign Howard. Because I would do this early on outside Howard that came out of Tampa Bay. Only reason he ain't shine because he was playing behind Gronkowski. Outside uh, Hayden Hurst, that was mm-hmm. from my hometown, from from South Carolina, was a number one draft pick at at at, at uh of uh, of uh, uh, um in Baltimore. But he had because he had a great tight end there. He went to Atlanta, got more speed, could do the same uh, dropping zone catches, and probably give you more yak yards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or he might have went to Cleveland. Cleveland throwing money at, at, at tight ends. They might have said, oh, we want Dalton Schultz still in Joku. They might have given him the 14. We probably could have got Joku for $7 million. Yeah. Yeah, he's not a franchise tight end. You said it earlier. That's just the bottom line. He's not. So, but 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 in Joku's contract, is was, well, they weren't anticipating it. And you know he's going to ask for it which is going to force their hand to probably just let him go. And that's why I was saying they really going to be kind of looking at Mr. Ferguson, the rookie, I mean, the rookie that we drafted from Wisconsin to see what he really has to offer because nine times out of 10, unless they going to sign somebody else, this is probably going to be our tight end next year. Our starter next year. I really believe it. And that's, that's fine. And I want Schultz to have a great year. I ain't worried about him slacking off his play. Mm-hmm. He's going to play hard because he just, he just got a lottery ticket. He mm-hmm. got a lottery ticket. He didn't even expect he was going to lie. He, there's no way in the world he came this offseason. Him and they said, oh, man, you're going to get $14 million a year, and you didn't even make the Pro Bowl. Yeah. He, he, so, he playing with house money because he already knows the standard to ask for next year. So anything that if he had better numbers than he had last year, he he really is going to ask for that type of money. If he outshined in Joku, he going to ask for that type of money. That's what I'm saying. So, it, 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 And you know something? If he asks for that type of money, Big Show, and this offense be able to get him those numbers, those great numbers, mm-hmm. Cowboys are still in a great situation because we can let him go, and there's another tight end out there that can give us that same thing. No question. Yeah, Dalton Schultz did. No question because you that ain't even count. You know, I mean, you ain't trying to go with a, with a, uh, you know a rookie, but we all know it's gonna be some tight ends coming out the draft. You're gonna have uh, Ferguson that's gonna be probably a big factor this year, and you're gonna have some free agents next year. To, to make it out, and they all of them going to be cheaper. But I guarantee you, if Dalton Schultz, and I can't blame the brother, to be honest with you, I, he'll be no, a stupid fool. He would be a fool not to ask for that type of money. I mean, I know he's yeah, smiling. He yeah, I mean, that's all he, he did. Yeah, I mean, that's all he got to do. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. So uh, that, that probably wasn't in the plans of the Cowboys. They when they gave him the franchise tag, I'm quite sure they may have thoughts of trying to, to, to uh, erase that before the season started and making him a tight end, you know, along maybe an extension. But most certainly when the Joker came out with that contract, that shut all that down. Cause I guarantee you, his yeah, agent, hey. his agent is saying, Well, we had this number in mind, but uh hold up a minute, uh <laughs> you know, no. Nah, and Dan Walter about to sign his contract. Yeah. The Raiders working on Dan Walter contract. Oh my so god! So you go up from there. Yeah. So I mean, if 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 it's Joku, if for instance, is at sixteen, Waller is dang near probably about to get nineteen twenty. For real, I'm serious. So you know, eighteen minimum. No question about that. Which means Schultz got to walk. Now he ain't stupid enough to ask for Dan Waller type money because he know he ain't on that level. But Schultz is saying like, wait a minute now, how in the world? What? And Joku got that. I'm better. Schultz is not a matchup problem. Yeah, no. Well, he's he, not a matchup problem. Well, actually, problem. he's a, his 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 numbers are you know he's a good player. He's a good player. I don't want to take it from him. He's a good player, but he's a product off of off of what Cooper Lamb. Cedric Wilson and Gallup when they were out there, he they, they let him roll. You know what I'm saying? 
they that defense That's coordinators right. are not concentrating on Dalton Schultz. They're concentrating on Coop, Lamb, uh, uh, Gallup, or Cedric Wilson, whoever's out there. I mean, it's one on one out there. He's good enough to beat most linebackers. He know how to find a spot in the zone, and usually nine times out of ten, he just gonna be right there. And so, no, he, he, and, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. I watch film. I watch film. Big show. He, he very few of his catches come on one on one coverage. Exactly. So anybody who one on one covers him, covers him. Yeah, he gets ninety percent of his. Exactly. Like you say, find a spot. Find a spot zone. in the zone. And, and, and he can do that. And that's what you need a tight end to do sometimes. But he's a product of coverage going to other places. That's what time it is. And and I can't right. I and and and, he, and God bless him. He's put himself in a position yep. to 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 cash in for real. But he's not that dude, and he's gonna want to get paid like it. And I don't think the Cowboys are gonna be able to sign him now. When the Joku signed yeah, that should. contract, when the Joku signed that contract, I said goodbye, Dalton. I knew it was over with. So you know they shouldn't. They no. should sign that. And you know something. And I want to say one other thing. You said something. Somebody brought up Deion Jones. Mm-hmm. I like Deion Jones, mm-hmm. but I don't like Deion Jones with his, And I'm not saying I don't like him because of his play. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't like Deion Jones because here it is. If Steven Jones wants to be Mr. Cap guy, Deion Jones is a young guy. He's coming off his rookie contract. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to sign Deion Jones for more than just one year. Yes, sir. And you are not using, you are not bringing in a veteran president linebacker here like you don't have linebackers already in the cover that needs to experience. Mm -hmm. Because now you're hurting the growth of the guys, because the guy from LSU, if he if he become healthy, he's gonna be a linebacker. No doubt about it. Cox, when he gets his experience, he's gonna be a good linebacker. Yeah. But these guys need to know the smaller things about linebacker play. Exactly. If you do it that way and bring a veteran guy, kind of on his last thing, maybe two years, maybe one year, give him something like after about thirty years old, inches in it thirty years old. They're going to be able to give you everything they got for that one year, and they're going to mentor these young linebackers to come up at a cheaper price and carry your defense to keep your defense at level that they can keep at. Yeah. But you don't want to get another young guy in here, and then you hurt the growth of your other guys because you got some guys that probably can give you what Deion Jones will give you, but a younger guy in his early 20s, Going on long money and long contract. No doubt about it. You don't need that. You have young guys, but you just need that experienced guy. Like a boss, Hitchison. Man, I would even take Big Show. I would even take Hightower, even though they talk about, you know, he, he's going to be in a limited role. They're talking about it. But his experience level and his know how from his Super Bowl experience, he comes in. He gives you some good plan, and his his locker room presence yeah. is going to carry this this linebacker core to another level. And once they learn what he knows, yeah. and their young legs, yeah. oh man, yeah, yeah, oh, it, it, it's a it's a win win situation. Even coach, if you do get Deion Jones, let me tell you what you're going to have. You're going to have, without a doubt, the fastest, one of the fastest linebacking crews in the league. And, and, right. and, and which, which has its benefits. Dion has some experience. So uh, that would be good. Cox, ha- you know, I, I, based on how the Cowboys are, they're going to go probably go with Cox and say, we're going to get what we can. We know he's limited. But we feel like that he's, you know, you know, he's a play one year linebacker at LSU. Exactly, and I, and I don't, a, I personally, a safety, yeah, he was a strong safety at uh, North Coast State. Yeah, I personally think we need the the the, 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 the veteran presence. But I just believe the Cowboys have this system, and they had a way of doing things. And the the formula is to get these young guys, get them on the field, grow, let them grow. 
and and hopefully they're good enough to take it up to the next level. I think that's what they're going to do because they're already putting out that they're high on cops already. So it's almost kind well, of let's call it, Big show, let's call it like it is. And it just, it, it, we like, I know your show like to keep it real. Mm-hmm. Let's call it like it is. The only reason they hadn't signed an Anthony Barr or a Hitchison in this, in this, this organization because they're trying to safeguard and keep LVE playing time. Yeah. That's all the reason. Yeah. And if you if if people out there watch film, mm-hmm. if you watch film on L V E and you specifically put it all L V E, all these years, all that year when they were going against Jalen Smith talking about in the year before last that they was killing Jalen Smith, yeah. yes, Jalen Smith did not have a great year. But his play was better than L V E. Yeah. If you look at, they don't never talk about pro football focus. Yeah. Look at the rankings of the linebackers and pro football focus of LVE in the last three years. Yeah. This is when he played. They don't do the rankings because when you did play, they don't do the the, the they they do this based off this time that you was on the field. Yeah. He is almost last in linebacker play in the NFL. Yeah. He has a higher missed tackle rate. Than just about any linebacker in the NFL at six foot four, mm-hmm. two hundred and forty pounds. Mm-hmm. So you, when we see a couple of splash plays, yeah. don't get it confused with, with because you don't grade films on one or two splash plays. Mm-mm. You grade films on every play, yeah. and if you look at his film and at the ball film, and you look at it side by side, mm-hmm. play after play. There will be no doubt. It will be totally evident that L- and the bar will be a vast upgrade mm-hmm. than LVE. Mm-hmm. And the NFL has told you this because mm-hmm. nobody offered him a contract over $2 million. Mm-hmm. Well, Coach, you know that's another whole show within itself because when we start talking about the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys and talking about our type of guys, then that means you have to do an investigation on who they say. That's what it all falls out of the guy. guy. There you go. And 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 so far, I I can name at least three three guys right off the top of my head right now that that were our type of guys. And no matter what kind of talent level was around them, or even if they were a little bit better at the time, they never let them guys play because they were. Our yeah, so they set the narrative. That's another and, whole and show. Right <laughs> and these haters set the narrative, and they they have a, every week they get on Tyron Smith about they want to trade Tyron Smith to get on that press guy. Is he going to be the get on CD Lamb? Is CD Lamb going to be a number number one receiver? They they want to bench uh, Zeke Elliott, and he's producing. And you want to not you don't want to talk about Tony Pollard and his in his uh, production. You talk about all these players, but you don't talk about guys that have been here that are the last leftovers of this defense, like LVE and Luke uh, 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 Gifford, who, by the way, was suspended one time for uh, PD uh, 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 performance enhancing drills for a couple of games. Yeah. But we talk about keeping these guys, yeah. and then you draft the guys behind them. Mm-hmm. And you're going through all this drafting and bringing in uh, uh, rookie free agents, mm-hmm. but you're trying to tell us that these guys are frontline guys and they're going to be great. Mm-hmm. But why are you drafting all these other guys? It's just, a, it's just fools, though. It's a mirage. Yeah. Look at the film. The film don't lie. Exactly. Talk is cheap. The grass will show up. Exactly. I get it, coach. You had me fired up that big show. All you right, had me fired up with those two players, man, when we start talking about you. Stay and tuned. Be, but the truth is not. He produced. I like Schultz. Yes, thank but he's a, you. I, I say it again. He's an eight, eight to seven million dollar a year, maybe nine million dollar a year line. I mean, uh, tight end. He's not in the category of of the of the great tight ends in this league, and he definitely should have a franchise tag, and he should be paid in the top five uh, tight ends in the NFL. That's not and that's fact. Exactly. He probably won't get that. Once he leaves Dallas next year, he still probably won't get that. NFL yeah. ain't, ain't crazy. 
Yeah, well, you you would. Yeah, I don't know now. I don't know, Coach. Cause uh, <laughs> call, 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 I call, 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 look, call Cleveland was crazy. So I don't know. Some some look, teams. Look here. Well, I'm gonna give you something about his joku, which I like about his joku. His joku is a better blocker than show. He Plus, is. If you look and check this out, his joku played in a system that was in total chaos with a quarterback. And they didn't know what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. We're running the ball. They couldn't. They let all they talk. How you expect the tight end to do well when you when you couldn't even keep uh uh uh, uh the one quarterback the, the running back the, the the receiver that went to the Rams? You couldn't keep Jarvis Landry together because you had a horrible quarterback with a horrible system of play. But if Joku may have caught less passes, but look at his average per catch. Yeah. Big show is yeah. three to four yards more than Dalton Schultz. Mm-hmm. He, he, so he, he got big play abilities catching for about eleven yards per catch. Mm-hmm. So he got more speed, more athletic ability than Schultz. Mm-hmm. Numbers is numbers not always because Schultz caught a lot of passes because he was targeted mm-hmm. probably probably way more than Juku was targeted. Oh yeah, look at the target. Yeah, no doubt about it. So he should catch more passes. Exactly. Exactly. Coach. He's, uh, better, he's a better future player than what Schultz will be. No doubt about it. Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks so much, man. All right, my man. We'll see you on Monday. All right. Listen here, y'all. I see my other coach done popped in, Coach Bree Love. We really weren't talking about Coach Bree Love, and I'll catch you up real quick because I have such respect for you. I'll catch you up what we were talking about. We weren't talking about is the position overrated? We were talking about this right here, Coach. We were talking about that David and Joku has messed up the plans, whatever plans the Dallas Cowboys had for Dalton Schultz as far as long term because look what he's getting paid. That's a four-year deal, Coach, that David and Joku signed, who's the tight end of the Cleveland Browns. 56.75, that's four-year contract. That's $16 million a year. And he got, I think, $11 million signing bonus. The reason why this messed up, Coach, is because Dalton Schultz have better stats than Njoku. So common sense tells us. Exactly. You There you go, Coach. Now you see. That's why we were talking about it because, remember, he got the franchise tag, okay? Schultz did. Now, I probably was thinking that the Cowboys went in and franchised and then they were going to work out a long-term deal before the season started just so they can get that money off the salary cap. However, because of this contract right here that you see on this screen, ain't no such thing as no long-term now because the Cowboys, they would be stupid, in my opinion, to pay Dahl to shoot $16 million that's that's the starting price. I mean, it ain't Schultz's fault, but that's the starting price because his stats are better than Njoku. Schultz would be dumb if he didn't ask for that money. See what I'm saying? Darren Waller with the Raiders, who we all know is a great tight end, he's coming up this year. Do you believe in, uh, if Njoku got this, it's about to go, oh, it's about, well, you're right, coach. No, no tight end is worth it, but because of this contract, they fit to make it worth it because you can rest assured. Walla, if he can $16 million a year in Joku, what in the world do you think Darren Walla's going to ask for? And we all know Walla is way, you know, two, three times better than Schultz. I mean, than uh, in Joku. So the, the the Cowboys, I mean, Dalton Schultz, when that man signed this contract right here in Joku, he had to been sitting back smiling. So in my view, the Cowboys got trapped. They didn't take care of it quick enough. Now they can't do a long-term deal because this is what the starting price is going to be, what you see on the screen. They're not going to pay that man that money. So I really believe this is Schultz last year with the Cowboys because they, you know, once Wallace signed, ain't no team going to pay Dalton Schultz $18 million a year. 
Ain't no, no team should be paying them $16 million a year, but that's what the price is going to be if you want them signed this year. The Cowboys not going to do that. That's why I was saying Coach Bree love the kid that they drafted from Wisconsin, Jake Ferguson. He going to get in the frying pan rather quickly because uh, – rather quickly because uh, uh, he has to show what he has to show them this year because Sue's going to be gone. That's just my opinion. And I, and Coach, Coach Price and Coach Breela, we just fell on that too. You know, that's another whole little show. Well, I mean, I haven't talked about it. I think somebody else didn't talk about it. But that's our – that's our uh, – that's our uh, – that's my thoughts. I ain't never talked about it when he signed, when Joku signed. Joku signed this about three, four weeks ago. I just never talked about it. I am now, and it just made common sense to me. He's not going to be there. That's just what I feel like. All right. Let me go on out of here because we done talk too much. Thank you for everybody that hung out with me. Um, thanks for Coach Price, as always. Uh, Coach Breed Love is here. John, all my people, Joe, um, who else is in here? Greg Davis, uh, Joe, of course, Cowboy Jay. Appreciate you guys as always. Uh, hang with me, John. I, I, don't, I don't think I met you, but I appreciate you hanging with me. I don't know if you follow me or not. You obviously do because you're on one of these pages. So, it's nice having you here, man. Appreciate that, man. I, I think this is my first time ever seeing you. Uh, appreciate your contributions to the show. Whoever else is on here, uh, if you didn't speak, that's good. Uh, it's all right. So we're going to be good. Monday, I'll be with you. I'm I'm free now because I'm off work now. Y'all y'all get ready for me. I, I'm, I'm off for the summer. I work at a school, so guess what? I'm I'm off now, so I get to I may come in the daytime now. Y'all understand? I might come in the daytime now. I may come a little bit more than uh just one day a week and then come on the weekend because I got the time now. Okay. So y'all get ready for me. I'm I'm coming. Tomorrow night, for those that want to hear me talk about the Lakers, I'm gonna be on a uh Lakers podcast tomorrow. Uh Watch this, y'all. I'm already ready for it. I'm already ready for it. Let me get that real quick. Let me show y'all something real quick. I'm already ready for it. Look at watch this. This look at this. Uh oh, let me get this out. Watch this. Uh well, let me move myself. Watch this, y'all. Now nah, y'all are not gonna hear me, but watch this. <laughs> Woo wee! <laughs> I'm ready for it. I'll be there tomorrow night. Uh, y'all come hang with me for those who want to hear me talk basketball. I'm going to be on this on somebody else show tomorrow night. Um, We're going to be talking Lakers, so y'all know how I am. I'm going to be acting a complete fool. Yes, sir, I am. I'm a Laker fan, Doc. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm look, I'm going to act a complete. So, you know, you go to somebody else show, you got to set a, you know, you got to set a standard. So, I'm going there to act a fool. Cause I don't like what the Lakers doing. I'm, I'm going. I don't know what the question's going to be. I don't know what the panel going to do. But y'all know I'm going to come, and it'll be before the game tomorrow night. So y'all can come hang with me. I think it's going to be at five or six o'clock Central Time. Y'all come on, hang with me. All right, all right. I'm done. Y'all see all this stuff here at the bottom here by now. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, there it is for you. If you want to follow me on any one of those platforms, there it is right there. Um, I'll see you guys on uh, tomorrow evening. If you want to come hang with me and talk basketball, I put it on my page where you guys can uh, come hang with me and all that, all right? I'm out of time, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Big Time Show. Put your hands on it. Yeah. We out of here. 
See you tomorrow night. We'll holler at you probably be tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, the big time show. Thank you.